All right, got a 2015 Toyota Camry that's having a start stall issue. We're gonna verify that. We've got our pre-scan done. We got all those ignition coil circuit codes, which apparently are for IGF. So it definitely is a start stall. And uh, at this point, uh, based on a little bit of research I've done on these codes, I think we gotta go right after the uh, IGF, IGT for one of the coils. And I'm kind of lean, already leaning towards, this is a replaced coil, but I wanna get uh, some test equipment on there first and see what happens. I do believe that that might be something going on. And you see here are the codes that we've got going into this. What is going on everybody? Happy New Year 2026. I wanna share with you this uh, case study or this uh, diagnostic process because the flow chart for the P0351, 52, 53, 54 will lead you down the road kicking rocks. Basically, they have some great information in the uh, flow chart or the code description and operation. Wonderful information, even scope captures right here. Check that out, pretty cool. But if you actually follow the flow chart, it will uh, lead you down the wrong road. And we're going to cover that a little bit deeper for this YouTube video later. And on the membership site, we're going to dive in really deep on that. All the, uh, the 351, 352, 353, and 354. Um, I think that the mass airflow circuit codes and the intake air temperature sensor codes were because the technician had the air box off. There is a little bit of uh, debris down underneath this air cleaner. Let me see if I can get a light here for you. Uh, there are some rodent uh, droppings and stuff and uh, nest material down underneath the air box, so that could be an issue as well. Now, I don't know the entire backstory to this vehicle. Uh, it very well may have been in another shop and had some other components replaced, but it did have fuel pump circuit codes from what I was understanding when the vehicle arrived at the shop. Some parts were replaced, and I don't know, like I said, the whole story. But I will tell you that looking at the codes that are setting, hard codes that are setting, the 351 through 354 are indicating that we have an issue with the IGF circuit. Um, that's going to be basically the circuit that goes uh, from every coil, and they're all tied together. You can see the IGF right here is this, this circuit right here that is tied to uh, each coil that goes back to the ECM. They're all tied together. If there's a fault in one of those, it will cause a fault with all of them. So I wanted to get in here and scope out my IGF and IGT circuits. Uh, IGT circuit is for each individual coil control. The IGF is the response from the coils indicating that they got their signal or that something is internally happening in that coil. It's not well described. Uh, one interesting thing here is the shop did tell me it would run off alternate fuel. Very interesting, but it would not have injector pulse and the fuel pump will turn off when you try and start it and run it regularly. So I went ahead and hooked up the scope uh, basically to these circuits. Let me see if there's a picture here to give you a better idea what's going on. We're just going to uh, back probe at coil number three, uh, our IGF and our IGT circuits. And that's what I went ahead and did here. All right, so here we are, the key's on, engine off. We're at 1.7 volts. And if you unplug it, it goes off? Yeah, that's it. So we're going to watch that so and I'll do the split screen so they can see both so you can see we're at 1.7 volts here key on engine off I'm going to go to this new uh, NGK coil which actually looks like an Amazon special to be honest with you and that voltage that voltage went right up so this coil is bringing down the IGF circuit for sure there's no doubt about that so we'll go ahead and start it up one more time make sure it'll run Okay, so you can see we're running there and take a look at this. Uh, you're going to see we are at 5 volts on that IGF, thereabouts. And uh, if you watch that scope, as soon as we uh, plug this thing in, it's going to stall out. All right. All right, everybody, we're going to take a quick look at a few things here, a little bit of the service information and also this waveform. This is the waveform with cylinder number four disconnected. So that bad coil was disconnected. So our IGF signal was 
coming up to 5 volts. Just so you guys know, anybody that's a core or premium member on the site will have access to all the scope captures I had on site here. So you guys can go ahead and take a look at them. So right here, uh, our blue signal once again is the coil control for cylinder number 3. And uh, you can see that happen once and then again. So this is one full rotation of the camshaft to crankshaft rotations to make this happen here. And we see we have our uh, IGF signal for that uh, cylinder and we of course have the missing one. This is right where our uh, coil is disconnected. The firing order on this vehicle is 1342. So this is number 3, this is 4, and then this is 2, and this is back to 1. So that's how that works and kind of what we're looking at here. I also want to take a minute to just go through uh, the flow chart for this. And this flow chart will have you replace a PCM uh, in this instance. I think it's really hard for engineers to anticipate everything that can go wrong with the system, but this is kind of rough that uh, it happened like this because I don't think that they're expecting that IGF circuit to ever be brought down like this. I think the vehicle was stalling because IGF, the reference to back to the ECM saying that the coils are firing, was not getting there. It's supposed to be a 0 to 5 volt signal, and it was like 0 to 1.7 volts, and it just wasn't enough to cross a threshold for the ECM or PCM to recognize that the spark plugs are firing. If we don't have spark plugs firing, do we want to be squirting fuel into the cylinder? No. So I think that's why all this was happening with this vehicle. We we're basically having a stall situation. It's not documented that I found in service information. If you see it out there, please let me know because I might be missing something. But let's just take a look at this. We're setting all four of these codes here. All four of those codes are setting, and there's a great deal of information that's good here. This is really what helped save the day for me right here. And service information, the scope captures, they basically show you if you count up, uh, you're going uh, 2 volts of division. So let me just blow this up for you. 2 volts of division, so this is ground. There's 2, 4, and that would be 5 volts to get up. And then this one's going from about ground to 4, maybe 4 and a quarter, 4. Uh, I don't know, a third or maybe, give or take. So that's there. We can see a lot of good information that Toyota has give us, given us in our service information. So they have the monitor description, all these things, and that's great stuff. But if you follow the flow chart, I just want to share with you where you'll get in trouble. Right here, the first thing they have you do is disconnect the coil, uh, ignition coil assembly connectors. Measure the resistance uh, according to the values in the table below. So they're having you basically check uh, uh, for the ground circuit. Uh, to be grounded below one ohm yes it is go to step two it's uh ng means not good okay is good right go to step two check the thermal uh, voltage power source to the ignition coils well logically thinking we would think hey if this thing actually starts and stalls it has power there for a brief minute at least and it's a good thing to think about am i losing the power to the coils because if the relay if a main relay turns off or something that would cause a stall but that wasn't the case here, and if we tested all these, we would have our battery voltage between uh, terminal number one and terminal number four. No issues there. So we do all that, and then uh, we can follow this step where they're telling us to disconnect the ECM and the ignition coil assemblies and measure the resistance here. Well, we know that this is all going to test good. This would never get us to our problem uh, or to the source of the problem. So, okay, next step. Now they say turn the tech stream on, uh, clear the codes, and then shuffle the arrangement of the coils. They're basically saying to mix match the coils and see if the fault follows a coil. Well, here's where this uh, flow chart could be written better, I think. What do you think? If, if we move our coils around in this instance, we're still going to have the same problem. We're going to have all those IGF codes set, 351, 52, 53, and 54, and we're not going to have a resolve to our issue. We're still going to have an issue here. So that wouldn't do it. And they say uh, basically read the DTCs. The same DTC is output which would be yes, it's the same code, we have proceeded step A, uh, replace the e ECM. So I just want to share this with you guys that uh, this is kind of where you can get in the weeds real quick. On the membership site, we're going to dive further into description and operation, which I think is huge, and talk about that more and give you guys some more tips on that. I hope you guys get something good out of this. Let's take a look at how this system works now with the coil replaced. All right, so we got ourselves a new coil, a Denso coil in here. And uh, if you could just turn the key on, engine off, we're going to watch the voltage here. Okay, and we are at, we went up to 5 point, oh, right around 5 volts, 5 volts with the key on, engine off. So that's our IGF. It's looking good. Go ahead and fire it up. We should have this thing a runner. 
and it looks like it's happy. So on the scope here, um, we're going to go ahead and hit the, uh, you can leave it running for one second, that's cool. Stop. I'm going to hit the run button. There we go. I'm just going to hit this run. I'm going to bring down my time. We don't need that much time. We can have a whole lot less time on here. We can also put a, a trigger to make this thing stay real nice for us. There we go. Now we got that looking a bit better. It still picks up the spikes, which makes it interesting, but uh, I'm happy with that. So I'm going to get in here and do a quick uh, post scan for you. I'll clear all the codes and then uh, be on our way. All right, so once again, this faulty coil right here was causing all the issues with this vehicle, pulling down that IGF circuit. Uh, behind me is a capture that you guys can take a look at here. This is on the membership site for core and premium members. It's all up there for you. But uh, let me take a slice of time here if we can. Just get zoomed in on a little section and see what we come up with. Let me panhand this over a little bit. And this is our uh, red trace, of course, is our IGF. And you can see that staying at 5 volts getting pulled down to approximately uh, 0.7 volts, give or take. So we got a swing of, uh, what, uh, 5 to 0.73. And then we got our IGT for our cylinder number 3, and that's looking good as well. Let me take a look. On the lower end, our uh, ground is about uh, 6 hundredths of a volt. Perfect. And we're only going up about 3.8 volts, but that's all it's required to make this thing operate. Uh, once again, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please let me know. If you like this stuff, like, subscribe, ring that notification bell. You guys know what to do out there. Happy New Year, everybody. Uh, we'll be in touch, and be sure to check out handsonautotraining.com. Take care.